All right, hello and welcome everybody to episode two of the RF Generation Collector Cast. Uh, I am your host, Duke Togo, and joining me is my co-host from the frozen tundra of the north. Crabmaster2000. And I actually had to mow my lawn for the first time this year today, so <laughs> we're not frozen anymore. That no snow now that it's almost June? No, it did snow three times last week, but... Um, <laughs> Not this week. We're good. No, and you had to mow. That's quite an accomplishment. Yeah. So I'm curious about how many months out of the year do you actually have to fool with your yard? Um, probably. Was we in May now? Usually earlier in May than this until August. End of August maybe. It's a pretty short time frame. Yeah, yeah. That sounds pretty nice. I have to fight with mine a bit more than that. So. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The yard works really minimal up here it's nice <laughs> yeah well I, it hasn't been snowing enough that i need to snow blow for a while so there's this nice time when uh, seasons are transitioning where i don't have to shovel snow blow or mow the lawn for like two months it's great <laughs> that sounds like a nice break for you yeah uh, i will have to say that um i'm i'm interested for winter to hit again so we can <laughs> we can talk about all how buried you are <laughs> and everyone everyone else can get to hear yeah if there's anything like the last two years it'll be we we broke some uh snowfall records last couple of years and went through the entire city's budget for removal so we're <laughs> if we have another snowfall like that we might be pretty hurting next year oh that's not good um well for those that don't know um crabby you want to tell them just roughly where where you live um i live a little little over the center line of British Columbia in Canada. Um, people call us northern, but we're we're pretty close to the middle. Yeah, I, I you know you're close enough to the Arctic Circle for me to <laughs> to be cold. <laughs> I, I'm actually about five hour drive south from where I used to live, so it's a nice nice summer retirement place here now. Yeah, well, I'll uh, I'm sure you'll you'll get yourself settled into the harsh sunshine. Yeah, yeah. Take some time, though. <laughs> Don't get too much of a tan. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, since last time, uh, we just want to take a second to talk a little bit about the some of the feedback we got from the first show. I, you know, I want to say, wow, I was really uh, impressed, Krabby. We seemed to really get a pretty good amount of listeners there for the first episode. Yeah, we got a lot of feedback right off the bat. It was wonderful to hear. Yeah, we're really glad to hear it, and um, and and definitely a little bit more. I'm sure everybody listened to it maybe in some different spots, but um, like over on on YouTube, uh, we had a comment from uh, Razor Knuckles over there. He just said, "Great, great job, keep them coming." Um, he agreed. I like this. I completely agree with you guys about playing older games you have not played back in the day, and still feels new. Yep, definitely. Uh, yeah, it says too many people nowadays think graphics make everything. Games never get outdated to me, and how. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I, I was just talking to Duke a few minutes ago, saying I, I brought Dead Rising to play with me, and I've really been looking forward to playing with it. And um, after putting a couple hours into it, I couldn't wait to get back to Joust on my NES for some reason. <laughs> what, which is better, Joust or Balloon Fight? Balloon Fight. Joust is, yeah, yeah. can be pretty annoying. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm with you. Balloon fight. I also want to take a minute to mention that after our first show, we got our first donation. So I want to give a huge, sincere thank you to Ryan Winters for taking the time to donate to the show. We really appreciate that. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, uh, our plan is to um, hopefully get some more bandwidth. Last month was kind of amazing. Our, for our first show, we sort of ran up to the limit. And if somebody ran into the... you we're over the limit message we apologize but we're working on trying to get that opened up so you shouldn't have that issue again yep um so so most of the feedback that we received from everyone was very positive um the only big concern from uh from a couple people seemed to be our sound quality which um we've tweaked a couple things for this episode so those of you that had some issue with the sound please let us know if we're we're moving in the right direction yeah i definitely want to try to make this as um uh easy to listen to and if, and if you guys can stomach our voices for an hour and a half uh, we don't want to make it any worse <laughs> worse for you that's for sure yeah good i think you know even we got some 
maybe some new people to the site. So um, for those of you that may be coming to us from other places, uh, uh, our podcast is really tied into um, the collector site that we kind of call home, which is um, uh, rfgeneration.com. And uh, we really encourage you, if you're not a part of that already, to come over and take a look. Um, look at our collecting tools. Um, join the forums. We've got a really nice community over there. And uh, I think the show brought a few people over and to, uh, into the community. That's fantastic. Uh, it's one of the main goals of this, so I hope we can keep doing that. Yeah, we'd love to hear from you guys. So if you, uh, if you come by RFGen via the podcast, uh, please take a minute to let us know. I love one of the, the, the very first comment on the YouTube version was um, just, just first. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what that thing is, that, but uh, you know, uh, I say uh, c- congratulations, <laughs> Baba Luca. <laughs> you had the first comment in. Yeah. You, you win. There's no prize. <laughs> what, what do I get for third? You you get the joy of speaking to me again. Ah, consolation prize, yeah. I, I don't even think that's really much of a prize, <laughs> but sure. Right now, on to uh, definitely one of my favorite parts of the show, and that's to uh, take a moment and highlight some of the uh, great pickups that people have found and shared with us on the site. I want to lead off with uh, Shaboni over there. Looks like he had a nice little pickup of a couple uh, GameCube games. He got a copy of Chibi Robo and um, Skies of Arcadia. And that fantastic Wind Waker lunchbox to go with him. Yeah, it was like a like a like a plastic lunchbox, right? I think it was a tin one. Was it really? I think so. I am surprised they even make those things anymore. Um, I still see them at uh, we've got like a board game shop in town here. Um, they sell like movie licensed and comic licensed um, tin kits like that still. Do do people actually ever use those really as lunchboxes or just like for show? Well, when I take my son to school, um, you get to see everyone's lunchbox outside the rooms there, and I don't see many like that style. They're all like the thermos style or Velcro up, um, not not tin ones like that anymore. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. They must just be for old geeks, is that it? Collectors or maybe to get, stick on the Maybe shelves. younger geeks? <laughs> <laughs> sure thing. You know, Skies of Arcadia Legends, that, man, it's, Skies of Arcadia is great. I don't have the um, GameCube copy, but I've got the original Dreamcast, and I played all the way through it. I really, really like that game. Very good. Did you ever play that one, Krabby? I, I played through it on the Dreamcast, and I, I did finish it, and I I don't care for it. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> I was kind of bored. I don't know why I, I got... I don't know why I completed it, but I did. And, uh, yeah, it's not something I'd ever revisit. All right, uh, guys, listen to the show. I just, you know, feel free to chime in and back me up uh, when we talk about things because he's always just, I don't know <laughs> where you're, <laughs> just, man. I don't have a lot of love for for a lot of games that people consider classic a lot of the times, I don't think. Uh, yeah, I would really agree. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't know what your problem is, but that's okay, I guess, you know, I I definitely have my own quirky taste, but it's, it's all right. Yeah, I don't. I don't mind you razzing me about it. I, I probably deserve it. Hey, look! If you played through Jeopardy <laughs> on the Nintendo, I, uh, I would play that again over Skies of Arcadia. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> oh, people, please comment and back me up. I don't know what the heck is wrong with this guy. An hour and forty long minute video of you beating Jeopardy, and that's only the the recorded time. There was a few failed. Uh, <laughs> sections in there <laughs> so we get we we get the edited out parts where uh, your trivia skills are not up to snuff exactly uh, you couldn't answer the tough questions designed for children of the 80s a lot of them were yeah outdated or like current events that are not current so i had no idea what they were anymore yeah no, a lot of george bush george 
original Bush questions or? <laughs> no, well, there was a, a question about like the only president who's ever had a son in office. And I'm like, wait, there's there's been another one since then. <laughs> <laughs> and there was another answer where Pluto was still a planet and some weird things. And it's probably tough, too, because it's probably a lot of U.S. trivia, right? Oh, yeah. Th yeah. There was a couple uh, Canadian answers that were pretty easy, though. Oh, yeah? Like, Canadian is a... You just had to know the name of provinces. It would, it would be like the French South. province or the westernmost province or the, the only province that's uh, touching uh, Alaska. Oh, okay, yeah, I could probably, I'd probably do okay with those. Yeah, they were fairly easy. Um, well, you were doing some GameCube stuff here. There was another good GameCube pickup there. Uh, Mr. Fumble grabbed an amazing GameCube lot for a really cheap price, but he got, like, three Resident Evil games, a couple Zeldas, a couple Metroids, Ikaruga, Eternal Darkness, Metal Gear Solid, like, just unbelievable lot of awesome GameCube games. Yeah, and if I remember right, I think it was like really pretty cheap. I think it was like twenty bucks, maybe thirty for the lot. Like it was just really good price. Yeah, like that's pretty crazy. Um, and and he's pretty new to the site, right? Yep. Hey, thanks for sharing that. And so obviously, you know, there's some really good stuff here. I mean, Ikaruga, I mean, come on. Yeah. You got that in that bundle. Eternal Darkness is one of the best games on the system, as far as I'm concerned, and and the Resident Evil games, um, always awesome. Some of my favorites. Twin Snakes, Bleah. very good. Bleah. That's the, <laughs> right up there with Skies of Arcadia for me. I can't stand Metal ah, Gear Solid. Ah, ah. All right, again, you're wrong. It's, it's a good game, but uh, it's all right. I'll uh, we'll let that slide. All right, thanks. Uh, I also want to um, give a little congrats to Wild Bill. I mean, Bill had a big month. I think. I mean, he picked oh, yeah. up uh, a copy of Gold Two. And um, he had a nice little collection of some black box games. Yeah, those are very, very awesome looking in the collection, especially complete in box like that. Yeah, I was a little jealous of the Popeye. I mean, a lot of these other games I'll see from time to time complete, but I mean, I don't, I can't tell you the last time I saw a complete Popeye. I don't even have a cart Popeye yet, so very nice. Oh. Now, now, are you going to tell me that you hate Popeye too? Well, I haven't played it yet, so I can't no, tell. Popeye, Popeye's a good game. <laughs> You'll. You better like it. If not, uh, well. And he also picked up a couple 32X games. <laughs> Night Trap, everyone's favorite. Yeah. And learned uh, just today as we're recording this that um, he helped on a reproduction. He did, did some little hacking of a ROM. Yeah. What, what do they do with those? They just update the rosters mostly for, for the old sports games? Yeah. That's what's uh, it's like yeah. a Genesis hockey game he updated. Very interesting. My, my favorite thing that he, he got this last month, though, was has got to be those uh, Play Choice 10 PCBs. Yeah, so those are really pretty cool, but, I mean, he doesn't even have a Play Choice yet, right? Yeah. I, I've, you've never picked up a game for a system you don't have yet? All right, yeah. But that's like an arcade machine you didn't have. That, you know, that's some commitment. There's some incentive to pick one up now because that would be a really, really cool thing to have in your house. I agree. I really, really want to play Choice 10. And I do too. And there's really not a lot of bad games for it. Like, the ones they put on there are awesome. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, you want kids to plunk quarters into the thing. I can't think. And I really want, I really would like to be able to play, like, versus Castlevania and versus Super Mario Brothers. Right. <laughs> you know, I've seen the reproductions of them, but yeah. have, you ever, have you ever played those? No, I haven't played the versus. Oh, boy. They are brutal. Um, because, like, in versus Castlevania, it's basically it's Castlevania, but the timer is much shorter. So I mean, you can't like, oh, I'm just gonna whip all the candles and kind of. <laughs> no, you got a truck for the end, or you're done. Uh, you know, you'll just you're dead. Interesting. And versus Super Mario Brothers, the levels are different. Okay. And again, timer is fast on that one, so you really have to be able to just plow through it. Really cool though. Very cool. So. Come on, Bill. Get you a play choice. I want to see some play choice stuff. Yeah. We also saw that um, Buildstar had that um, this Queen's Day thing where he where he's at, like some giant flea market kind of thing that goes on there. And where where is he from again? Uh, yeah, he's from the Netherlands. Queen's Day or whatever the case it is. It looks like he just went out and just got a nice big stack of stuff. I saw like a couple um, like boxed 
with like PlayStation guns that he got, just a ton of games that he ran into, and it seemed like the prices were all really good. He has a nice blog post that he put together on it. I would say if you guys had get a chance, uh, if you've not read that one, take a look. I would love something like that in my area. Yeah, you really cleaned up. I'm looking at that post right now. Is there anything like that out where you're at? No. We're, we're missing a lot of stuff up here, though. We're not a very big community. Yeah, I mean, I live in a, a pretty small old town. I mean, uh, there's big close there's big towns close to me within like half hour, 40 minutes. But um, we just had last weekend a big, you know, kind of community yard sale thing. But unfortunately, I was stuck selling. I didn't really get much <laughs> of a chance to go out and look, which really kind of bothered me. I, I, don't, I don't like missing out, but, you know, it was probably just junk anyway. That's what I'll tell myself. What else we got out there? Um, well, if we want to stick with uh, the overseas finds, um, Surgeon grabbed a really bright yellow DSi. A really cool color to those ones. I have never seen one of those in uh, North America. Yeah, it almost kind of reminds me of like, um, isn't it kind of like that Donkey Kong 64 kind of cart color? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know whatever that kind of yellow, it's not, not quite a Pikachu. <laughs> no, more banana. <laughs> I think that's the deal, right? Doesn't like each territory get its own specific special color that they don't release in other territories? I've heard that. I don't know um, if there's any truth to it, but um, definitely be cool to get that color over here. I liked it. Yeah, I think so because I know like in Japan they've got an orange GameCube, and uh, yeah, I don't think that got released anywhere else. Spice colored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like pumpkin or whatever that is. No, I think that's what it actually says on the packaging because I've got the the controller here for it, and it says it's spice. Really, you have the controller? Yeah, they they released the controllers over here uh, in that color, but not the systems. Oh, I see. Very interesting. Yeah, that gives you something to look for, then, doesn't it? Absolutely. Um, and the the last um, overseas find was just amazing. That uh, Sharp um, grabbed all those sealed game PSU games. Oh yeah, all the the U.S. games. Yeah, they were all imports for him, but um, there were some amazing games in there, like Rule of Rose and Xenosaga Two, uh, Digital Devil, just unbelievable. Yeah, especially I mean for the prices that he paid for those, and especially a sealed Rule of Rose. I mean, I, I live here in the states where the games came out. I don't ever see that game, especially not new and not for that kind of price that he paid. So I mean. I don't know who your guy was that you found that had all this stuff, but man, it was really pretty fantastic. Yeah, like he, he mentioned some of the seals are damaged, but even then it's still an amazing deal. Oh yeah, I would love to find a decently priced Rule of Rose open, just as long as it's complete. No doubt. So, very good. I think you did miss one other little import pickup. Um, a new member, uh, the Grim Angel, found a Neo Geo Pocket for like six bucks. Right, I forgot and, we and had a, someone in Japan posting now. Yeah, so he was in the store in the junk area, and that's kind of what I understand. And those, a lot of times they have stuff that's kind of marked as junk that that they think is not working or it's not tested or whatever. And you can usually get a good deal on them. And so he picked this one up out of the junk pile, six bucks for a Neo Geo Pocket, and uh, said it worked like a dream. Can't complain with that. No, I mean that's that's pretty cool. It's uh, I don't see a lot of Neo Geo Pocket stuff around here, so especially to try to get a system for that kind of price. That's fantastic. So back back over uh, closer to home, what do we got here? Oh, what about Sir Psycho's deal? Oh yeah, that was that's one of my favorite finds. Uh, digging in the dumpster, hey? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was picking in the trash, and and what did he come up with? Einhander in the trash. Yeah, complete. Yeah, and it looked like it was in pretty good shape still too. Yeah, and some other PS1 games too. I mean, which you know is fine, but yeah, Einhander. Yeah, he got some other like you know like the classic games like Final Fantasy VII and Crash Bandicoot. But yeah, that Einhander is just awesome. The rest is just icing. Yeah. How is somebody throwing these away? Oh, it beats I, me. I don't understand. And he just said like he was just watching, and then like, oh okay, let's go check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Taking the guy's trash. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, that never happens to me. I can't say I've ever seen that either. Although I have been reading about people here lately that have talked about dumpster diving in GameStop. 
Yeah, for um, I guess they throw out you know their cases and manuals and and yeah, there was someone posting they were cleaning up all the Club Nintendo points cards and stuff like that <laughs> out of them. <laughs> That's smart. I don't know why I didn't think. I, I've got a buddy. I actually know the guy that runs the local GameStop here. So maybe I need to start talking to him. Yeah. Um. Back when I used to work at Rogers Video years ago, um, after a few years, we'd we'd inventory all the cases and we'd have like two hundred extra game cases, and they would just throw them in the dumpster. So I'd usually bank a few of those too. I had a friend that worked at another game store for a while, and um, when that place shut down, he gave me like this big sealed bag full of these, you know, the Club Nintendo codes from different games and whatnot, and. I already used enough to hit platinum for last year and get, you know, my prize and um, uh, my... Um, what was it, last year, game... the statue? No, I got the game and watch. Oh, okay. I, I meant the, the platinum prize because you, you have to spend your coins to get the game and watch, right? But the platinum prize, they yeah. just send you some yeah. cool freebie. Right. I've not gotten that because I'm platinum now, so I'll get whatever the thing is coming up. Okay. And then I've been waiting because as, as, as soon as I've got to try to hit platinum again, I'm going to go in and spam these codes, and I really want to get the Game & Watch ball. I'm doing the same thing. I'm, I'm already at platinum for this year, and I've got a 3DS, uh, a few games for it, um, a few new Wii games. Uh, I should have about probably 400 more, more coins. Um, I'm just waiting for it to roll over to the new year to add them in. I've got like a lot of these codes saved up that are duplicates for like games that I've already entered, and of course you can't enter the same one twice on the same account. But I think from what I've read that you can go in and kind of put your kids under your Club Nintendo account, like family things, yep. and then in and enter the games again a second time for if you've got different codes. Yeah, I've got I've got an account for my wife and my son linked up under me, and I've I've got like three of the same game linked up under under the three of us there. Yeah, yeah. So that's my plan to hit platinum again and to get my my game and watch ball. Is that is that what you're gonna go for? Yeah, I've already got uh, both the game and watch collections. I've got all the poster sets. So ball's my next goal. Yeah, I've got I've got both the game and watches. Um, I've not really been too concerned about some of the other stuff, but I definitely want the game and watch. Um, and then I wonder if they'll put like an, another new prize out there. I uh, usually once every. I think I want to say two years they put out something like the big ones like the Game and Watches. I really want something NES related. Yeah, good luck with that. It, <laughs> well, I mean, they did Game and Watch. Yeah, that's true. Um, the first two, yeah, I wish they do more Wii stuff. It's all it seems to be DS stuff for just crap. Uh, I don't see a lot of Wii stuff with Wii Wii U coming out. I'll, I'll go for Wii U. I just want more console attention. I'm not a big handheld guy. You know, I'll take whatever they want to give me. Yeah, well, like I'm not complaining. It's just bonus stuff, so I'll take whatever That's they give true. me. It's very cool. I don't and I don't see anybody else doing that for me. So yeah. and my, Microsoft and Sony don't show me the love. <laughs> <laughs> so the last one I want to hit was uh, PWP Cody. Um, he's been working hard on finishing up his N as uh, N64 collection. Oh yeah, and yeah. he scored a, a nice lot of boxes manuals. Um really good games like donkey kong both the zeldas star fox turok rogue squadron like some really good titles in there to to help him on his way and maybe he'll he'll switch over to complete in box collection now uh that's the sickness right the cardboard sickness <laughs> it's not it, it's not the sickness it's the cure oh right right uh, for those of you i don't know if we talked much about it in the first episode but Krabby is a big cardboard guy and and i am not as much I think it's cool and everything, but I don't go out of my way for it. It's so beautiful. I agree. It looks nice, but boy, cardboard is really hard to take care of. That that's one of the draws of it to me. It's really cool to have something so old and so fragile in such good shape. Yeah, well, when I come across it, I just know it's worth worth some money. So somebody, if I get bored of it, I will buy my piece of cardboard, <laughs> to, and then maybe I can use that to actually get some games that I care about. You could just sell those carts and buy some cardboard. Come on. <laughs> that's not gonna happen <laughs> i don't know what that affliction is but that's all right uh, there's those folks out there that are into it and i applaud you <laughs> i had a few nice little pickups myself this month do you tell yeah i got uh i finally got a copy of bubble bobble 2 sweet and, and very i mean i have to say 
very nice copy of Bowl. I mean, really, it looks like it hadn't been played. In fact, when I went in to pick it up, because I had got it was like a local store, and um, I stop in there from time to time, and I always just have them check, you know, inventory in their other stores and see, you know, if there's anything on my list that that they can get a hold of for me. And when I went in and to pick it up, I mean, the guys that were there, it was kind of funny. They were laughing. They're like, yeah, we were like taking pictures and stuff <laughs> of, this, <laughs> of this game. And, and we're kind of wondering if you were going to show up and buy it. And I'm like, well, yeah, of course. So it was, that was kind of funny. I also got in um, some unlicensed NES carts. So uh, I got a Racer Mate Challenge too, which um, interesting novelty. I mean, uh, you know, obviously nothing too terribly exciting as far as a game goes, but it was kind of neat. I'd never really seen one before, so it was kind of fun to get one of those in. Going for the bike now? Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> Uh, although I did appreciate, um, if you, uh, go to RF generation on the, we have a small scores thread that, where we pull a lot of these things from. So if you're listening to the show and you want us to talk about some of your things, you'll have to go join up and post, but, um, make sure to add some uh, pictures too. We like the pictures. Yeah, definitely. And, um, Bickman had posted about the bike and there's this shot of this bike with the N64 handlebar controller kind of strapped <laughs> to it for handlebars with some duct tape. Yeah, that's awesome. That was kind of funny. Um, there was a couple other unlicensed games that I picked up. Um, so did you, do you actually pick up anything that you'll, you'll play or <laughs> just, uh, collectibles? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I got a copy of Mario Brothers classic series right. from, from Germany. So I'd been looking for a copy of that for a little while. And for those of you that maybe, um, are not as sickly obsessed with the NES as I am, uh, and Krabby is, um, but there was a version of Mario Brothers that was re- uh, originally released on the um, disc system in Japan. And uh, I, trust me, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I believe it's it's Karatiaka or something, Mario Brothers. But it, it had with some advertising, was basically tied into it. There was some advertising in the game for a product, uh, some kind of rice or some food or something. But they also had gone in and tweaked the gameplay of Mario Brothers. They kind of added the intros that you found in the arcade game that kind of talked to you about the enemies of each level. And it also altered the jump physics to be the Super Mario style, so where you can actually control the direction you're going when you're in midair, um, as opposed to, you know, the, your standard in Mario Brothers originally, just whenever you jump, you can't control yourself once you start jumping. Um, and this version, this German version, is a coding of that disk system version minus the advertising so it's just it's mario brothers again but with just a new kind of play control style and um, it is really good it really fixes a lot of the issues that i didn't like about the original mario brothers it makes it much more playable i think and um, i personally i think that's the best version of the game sounds like it yeah add some extra goodies and get rid of the advertising what's to complain about yeah and so i would say and it's not a really expensive game i mean even though it is um unique to europe um, i didn't pay an arm and a leg or anything for it so you know if any of you are out there looking you know hop on ebay for germany um you know it's really not very expensive uh, i didn't pay a lot to get it shipped over to the state so if that sounds cool to you um check it out uh, i also got in for a trade that i did um there was uh, a guy over on nintendo age and he was looking for some famicom pirate carts and so I, I did a trade for a few of those, and he made me a couple of reproduction NES carts. So I got a, a copy of Secret Ties and the Final Fantasy II prototype that was supposed to come out. Secret Ties is kind of fun. It's like an action-y game, sort of uh, reminds me sort of a Ninja Gaiden Shatter Hand-ish kind of thing. It was pretty cool. I'm kind of surprised it didn't come out. It seems, it seems pretty fun. Um, Final Fantasy 2, I don't know, maybe I'll get to that, but it's got such a bad rap. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to spend hours beating the crap out of myself to level up. You know, do you have any experience with Final Fantasy 2? Not with 2, no. I, I do have experience with beating myself up to, to grind levels, though. Really? <laughs> I love grinding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do have that sick affliction, don't you? 
I guess that goes with cardboard itis or something. They're probably related, yeah. And last but not least, I also picked up a 3DS finally. And what are your what are your initial thoughts on that? You know, I had kind of always, I mean, before I was reserved the point to think, well, I was just going to wait until they come out with, you know, like the light version. Yeah, like the uh, re- redone or like an Excel version. Right. Um, but I just couldn't kind of pass up this local deal on Craigslist for what I got. And um, I really like I'm really impressed. Uh, it, uh, it's it got a lot of features built in. Uh, the model I got was lucky enough to be one of the amb- ambassador models, so it's got like a lot of the free games built into it. And the, yeah, it sounds like the, the GBA games in particular are really good titles. Yeah, they really loaded things up really well. Um, so I'm kind of glad that I got to take advantage of that. Um, I do want to say for those that are out there, if you want to find me on the 3DS, my friend code, uh, I will post that in the show notes. So feel free to add me. And I think that's probably about it for me. I don't know. It's been a really busy month with games. Mine's been the opposite. I've been uh, still recovering financially from stadium events. So um, I, I picked up a copy of Dead Rising for 10 bucks, a copy of Valkyria Chronicles for 10 bucks, And uh, I think that's pretty much it in the last month. I've really been trying to pace myself until... Uh, so I can get back on budget. And Valkyria Crowns, that's a great game. Have you did you get a chance to play it? No, I haven't put it in yet. It's one of the, the games I originally wanted when I when I got my PS3. Um so I'm quite psyched to finally have a copy to try out soon. Yeah, I've got that. I really like it. Um I didn't get a chance to play really deeply into it. I think I've played the first few levels. Um just haven't had the time to get back to it. But um it's pretty cool. It's very nice. So you have to let me know what your thoughts are when you get to it. Will do. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Yeah, I just really, uh, at work, I happened to come across um, an extra, like, three and a half inch hard drive. And so I think I might brave trying to do a hard drive upgrade for my PS3. Interesting. Yeah, I don't, uh, I've got, mine's one of the originals, like 60 gig. Yeah. PS3, the fat ones, you know, that were backwards compatible. And so this is a 200 gig drive, so I don't know. I might uh, give it a shot. Hopefully, I won't strip out the screws like everybody says you got to watch out for. Because of how I game, I just can't fathom ever needing a hard. Like I don't even need a an upgrade on my Wii internal memory. <laughs> all all I have as ever is save files. That's it. No DLC for me. Honestly, on for us, I don't think that's it. I um, I'll. I'll rip like movies and stuff for the kids and stick it on the hard drive so they don't have to worry about discs. Right. That you know because those things get scratched up or whatever. And if I could just rip a bunch of movies, stick them on the hard drives, and they just go in and play them whenever they want. My my son's a big fan of Netflix, so I don't have that disc issue right now either. Uh, I am not a Netflix subscriber. So. Uh, for the the kid stuff, it's awesome. The, the adult stuff's kind of lagging behind, but yeah, if you, if you've got a kid under ten, like it's definitely worth the eight bucks a month. We kind of get, um, I use on the 360, the Xfinity Comcast cable app where we get some of that stuff. Right. And then and then um, the HBO Go app, which is really very cool. I don't really like that. Hmm. I, I don't pay for live, so I don't get those nice little perks. Yeah, that's a shame um, that they don't give those unless you're a gold member. Yeah, I can't even use my Netflix subscription that I pay for on there unless I pay for live. It's very frustrating. You're going to have to break down and spend that 30 bucks. Yeah, I've got, you know, three other devices that run it, or four or five. <laughs> Too many. Yeah, cell phones run it, tabs run it. Yeah, we got a lot of different ways to watch it. We don't need one more. Um, so last time we talked about um, why we we like to collect and many of the reasons that drive our collecting habits. Um, so we thought we'd kind of explore the 
online portion of that this week um, and just really flush out all the different sources we use online to uh, to pick up new games. I don't know about you, uh, but really these days to find like certain items online is where it's at. I mean, it's very difficult some for some things to find locally. Yeah, and I I would especially agree living where I do because the the nearest big city is like a eight and a half hour drive away, so I can't um, depend on like Craigslist ads or local game stores or things like that to even find things. So I have to go to eBay if I want particular items. Or sorry, not eBay, but online. Where do you find, what's your major go-to source when you're talking about online stuff? Most of my purchases and my favorite way to purchase is hands down through gaming forums. No question. I think I would agree with you completely. Um, I know that's, you, you're going to get a little bit, I guess I want to say, other people that share the same passion you do. Yep. So, you know, you're going to, even though necessarily you're not talking about trying to find the cheapest prices in the planet, but you're going to get people that are going to give you a straight deal in terms of what they get, and you're going to know what you're getting. Yeah, I find they're just more um, willing to, to, like, you make you may, don't just make a sale. You make a contact. Like, you've got someone you can do business with in the future. You've got someone who will give you bulk deals. You've got someone who will look out for games for you. You've got, like, it's just the list never ends. You got people that will say, "Okay, hey, look, I'll set things aside for you." Yeah. There's a a guy that, that I was on another forum, and he's I've got I keep kind of a want list of some Famicom stuff out there, and he said, "Hey, you know, I've got you know three of these things, and, and here's kind of what I'm looking at price wise for it. What do you think?" And I said, "You know, I, I'm definitely very interested. I just need to, you know, a little a little time to see if you scrape that the money up." And uh, he was like, yeah, just no problem. I'll hold it aside for you. Just let me know. Yeah, I've had people that I've had like zero contact with um, let me pay them in payments or like you said, hold on to items for me. And it's not like we're even chummy on the forums. They just are willing to do that sometimes. Yeah, I think it's, you know, like a lot of people that really share, you know, the love for the hobby. Yeah. And there's a lot of good people. You know, I think that's it. If you take the time in most cases, to really stop and post often on forums, you obviously care about gaming um, and or collecting. As opposed to sometimes, you know, on some online just shopping sites, oh, I definitely don't always get that feeling. Yeah, and that kind of, um, I don't know, uh, like he's, you'd, you'd think with a business, um, they'd strive for some customer service, right? But with a lot of online stores... You don't get that, and the forums seem like the place where you get that online. You get people who will send you those detailed pictures that you want, or describe it in great detail, or and and they're always like painfully over descriptive. Like they will point out every single flaw, whereas you can't get more than a stock photo from a lot of uh, online stores. Yeah, definitely. If you even get a stock photo, and I think the other thing that really helps with that too is, I mean, really. You have an online reputation uh, on these boards, and you know there's those feedback threads. If you don't treat people right, I mean that's really going to do some damage to you. Yeah, like I've like I don't uh, often go to digital press, but I, I'm aware of some sellers to avoid from people have been burned there. So they they post on Nintendo Age, they post on Racket Boy, they post on RF Gen. Like you know, watch out for this guy and. It's good to know they're, you know, watching out for the community. Absolutely. And um, and I'll go out and I'll say the same thing, you know, the other direction. When I find some really fantastic sellers from a certain point or a certain site, you know, when I hear about people in other forums, I'm, I'll point them in that direction and go, hey, you should really talk to this person over here. Absolutely, yeah. I've brokered a couple deals through different forums um, for people. Yeah, same way. Yeah, and I think that's it. You just, you're never going to get that in other online um, tools. So, so what are some of the big uh, forums that you frequent? Um, the three I check daily are RF Generation, of course, um, Nintendo Age, and Rackaboy.com. Kind of, what do you get? What's your different flavor for those communities, I and mean, what separates them? Um, they, each forum has a different focus. Um, RF Gen's um, just very broad collecting focus. Um, so you want to 
little bit of information on any system, you're going to find it there. And same thing with the purchases. Like I've got stuff from Neo Geos to Sega CDs to NES carts to Virtual Boy games, like all over the place. Um, with Racket Boy, it's a very gamer oriented site. Um, not a lot of collectors there. So I'm not going to find the rare items there, but the games I am going to find there are good quality playable games. And generally, they're since they're not collectors, they're not as price focused. So I've I've found some pretty good deals there. Not good. Yeah. And with with Nintendo Age, the focus is obviously Nintendo and specifically the NES. So since one of my goals is to get a licensed NES set, um, it's an awesome place for me to pick up uncommon games. It's just unreal. You talk about there is a really hardcore collecting focus on that side yeah they, they go both ways but the yeah the collecting uh, definitely overshadows just the gaming i think there too i consider myself um a pretty serious collector but i mean there's people there that i, I don't even rank <laughs> anywhere close to some of those guys i know it's just uh humbling to <laughs> see some of their collections and hear them talk about it and just see how long they've been doing it yeah, and I'm thinking, man, I really, uh, I was late to the show. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm with you there. <laughs> and that's what's not, I mean, I've been doing this my whole life, and I still feel like, ah, I'm late to the show. Yeah. But one thing I wanted to add, too, speaking of Nintendo Age in particular, uh, we were talking about reputations on forums. Yeah. Um, your reputation can actually have a dollar value, like, attached to it in some cases. Um, for instance, there was, there was a member selling a stadium events, um, just through the forums on Nintendo age, nowhere else. And it went for $500 more than the next eBay sale because this seller had that reputation. This, um, honest person wasn't going to rip you off a legitimate copy. Like his reputation was worth cash dollars there. It was really cool to see. Yeah. And I really like their... Um, transaction and feedback system there. It's very nice, yeah. Like, no one can complain they didn't know what they were going to get or receive, like how it was going to work. It's all laid out really simply for them. Yeah, and if you don't get exactly what it's, it's because you didn't bother to specify that when you laid out the deal. Yep, it seems that way. Because they've just got this built-in transaction system, and you set it up, and you, as long as you're very clear about what happens, I mean... And it's out there for everybody to see how it went. I'm really impressed by that, and um, I really wish I could see more of that maybe in some other sites. Hint, hint. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not that's fine. I mean, most obviously most forums just do it via a thread, which is fine. Yep. Um, and that works well enough. Um, but it, just the system they've taken the time to implement there is just very impressive. Absolutely. So do you ever go to some of the other big gaming sites? I have, um, yeah, I've I've done one deal through Digital Press, um, and it went very well. No complaints here. Um, I, I frequent other ones. I, I look through their forums, like um, PC Engine FX. I've been to almost done a few deals there, but just um, never pulled the trigger on them. And, and I always lurk around other sites like Atari Age and stuff, but I've never done any deals through them. I've been on and, and around Digital Press for quite a while and um, I've done several deals on there and you do that's another kind of collector community um, but a lot of times it seems like you've got a lot of interest in um, some of the uh, classic stuff there I mean the, yeah like the pre 8-bit era yeah or, or early 8-bit I guess yeah. you know so Atari uh, Coleco yeah um, in television to some degree Whereas, like on a lot of these other sites that we were just talking about, there's not a lot of, besides like Atari Age, there's not a lot of draw for those. No, very true. And I mean, you'll see posts when people are talking about like Astrocades and stuff. I mean, you just don't see a lot of that on other sites. <laughs> nope. You, you definitely don't see those kind of things popping up on Racket Boy. Um, another site that you didn't mention that I frequent a lot is um, Famicom World. And um, Famicom World reminds me a lot of, like, the RF Generation community. It's, it's a small community. Um, actually, their, their forums 
uh, run off the same sort of software that RF Generation does. Just a very small, kind of comfortable community that's there. Very knowledgeable people in what they do and really willing to help folks out for the most part. And I've done quite a few deals over there. I mean, mostly buying because I don't have a lot of random Japanese stock just sitting around <laughs> for me to sell. But, um, I mean, I have had some people interested in some, you know, U.S. stuff that I have. But I will have to say there are some really good sellers over there. And I know a lot of people that are interested in, um, like, Japanese imports and stuff. There are a lot of websites and things that really kind of try to take you to the cleaners. And um, the people that sell over there really give you, uh, I think, a very fair price for most things. Um, even when you include shipping, um, I'm usually really very happy with the deals I do over there. There's people that take the time, like we kind of talked about before, that will watch out for some things for you if you've got like a list. Um, I really specifically want to mention one person I've done a lot of deals with. Well, I guess two, but um, Sensei Man is a user that's over there, and um, he's really helped me out uh, with a lot of items that I've been looking for. I mean, to the point where, you know, he'll take my list, and when he goes out to shops and stuff, he'll look around for stuff on my list. I've actually heard his name mentioned um, through other forums. Other people um, very satisfied with him, too. Yeah, it just seems like he's a great guy. And um, also, I bought from Manuel, who's over there. And um, same sort of experience. I mean, it's more of just whatever his stock is, but he's always treated me very well. I've bought some... Um, that's where I got my nice boxed AV Famicom and uh, beautiful shape and really good guy to deal with. Very fair. I would encourage you folks, um, if you have any interest in that, um, to head on over there. Uh, I'm just amazed at the amount of technical knowledge that some of those guys have. It's really pretty incredible. So we've, we've covered forums pretty well now. Um, what are some other uh, online options we've got? What about some auction sites, right? Sure, yeah. I guess there's a few of them now that people use quite often besides just eBay. Yeah, I don't think everybody knows eBay. There's not really much reason for us to discuss that. Um, although, do you use eBay a lot? Um, I'm using it less each year, but I still use it a little bit. Um, like I, I grabbed uh, Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters off there just a couple months ago because I got a really good buy it now on it. But generally, I just... I can do better through forums so um, and I could find the same items same time frame so I don't don't see the need to pay a few extra dollars to use eBay when I've got better options I kinda get that too I mean you know so obviously I bought some things through eBay and every once in a while you get a, you get a decent little deal but yeah it seems like um, some things on eBay have, have gotten a little ridiculous yeah, and like when I started collecting, um, I bought lots off eBay pretty regularly and systems and got some really good deals, and it just seems like a lot more time and effort goes into finding those same kind of deals now where, I, where I'm not finding it's worth my time to, to sit there for 10 times as long as it used to take me to find a good deal. Yeah, same thing. I mean, you really almost have to live on eBay to get the decent deals that pop up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think there are people that literally, that's what they do. You know, they just sit and refresh, refresh, refresh all day long looking for those things to come in. And those are a lot of times resellers too. You know, they're just going to, they're just going to buy the stock up so they can mark it back up to their level and, and kind of keep the prices high. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a fan of people doing that, but like I, I have no, no issue with someone like a collector who's sitting there to working hard and taking a lot of time to to find that eBay deal to add to their collection. I got no problem with that, but the the reseller thing kind of annoys me. Definitely. You know, if you do your homework and um, you're using that to add to your collection, yeah, that's great. Um, and I've had to do some homework on trying to get a good deal on things myself. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of the, you know, let's buy up all the stock and try to force prices high. Um, yeah, I could live without that. I think that's definitely one of the dark sides of eBay that's brought out in people. Yeah, like um, just not too long ago, I, I was watching a, a gun knack auction, and um, I, I put my bid on, on an auction, and at, at the time I bid, there were several buy-it-nows available, 
uh, mostly through the same seller. As soon as the auction finished, which finished for a couple bucks more than the buy it nows, uh -huh. about an hour after the buy it nows were all twenty bucks more expensive. <laughs> Well, of course, because they go, oh, I have no auctions to compete with. And and that auction sold for five dollars more than my buy it now was listed for the last two weeks. Yeah, so they bump it up immediately. Yeah, I I generally tend to see that if there are copies for auction, the buy it nows are going to be a little more reasonable. But if they're the only games in town, yeah, forget about it. They're going to put it sky high and hope for that person that just doesn't care. Yeah, well, it seems to be working for them, and I can't really fault them for. For trying to make some money, I don't know. No, I mean that's that's the uh, that's the way of the world, I suppose. Just um, you know, I guess it drives me away from eBay. Yeah, it's it sucks, but um, ultimately it's just entertainment items that people don't need. So if they cost a lot, then they just cost a lot. I have to deal with it. What about game gavel? Um, I look around there all the time, but I haven't actually spent any money on them yet. And I, I know you've done a few deals through there, so what are your thoughts? Game Gavel obviously doesn't have quite the selection that you're going to run into over like on a place like eBay where you can find pretty much anything. But I've got some pretty good deals through sellers over at Game Gavel, and um, they seem to usually be pretty open to working with you too on price. Um, so you know, if you think something's a little high that they've got, I've had really good response with people going, okay, yeah, sure, we can work a deal out. Um, it seems to be a lot more of um, smaller sellers. So sometimes a lot of the same sort of people you would see in forums are going to be posting over there. I mean, not necessarily, but um, that's often what I see is some people will put up some kind of their overstock or their, some of their sale items over there. And so that way, you know, they've got just more avenues to try to sell. Right. Yeah, and I know um, NES Rules, um, the director at um, RF Gen has put tons of stuff up on there over the years and nothing but good things to say about them. Yeah, I've sold uh, a few things through Game Gavel, and it's been a really great experience. Um, Mike Kennedy, the, the guy that runs that, um, he's you know obviously tries really hard to, uh, to keep that site going and growing. I love some of the the promotion stuff that he does, like uh, the big game hunter. Very, very amusing to watch. I love that. Yeah, for those of you that don't know, that's um, Mike's uh, YouTube series. Uh, I I want to say that uh, I I'm the one that came up with the name for that. So <laughs> I won the naming contest over on on their forums uh, at Game Gavel. And uh, yeah, that's a really fun show, isn't it? Yeah, it's a blast to watch sometimes. Yeah, so I mean, those of you that haven't seen it, he goes to these big Southern California swap meets and he wears these um, like glasses that have a camera built in, but people don't know it. So he's recording kind of his his shopping through these flea markets, and sometimes he's he comes across some pretty good deals. And uh, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm watching the stuff he's passing up, though, I'm kind of going, no, 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 wait, no. <laughs> I always want to say, no, no, go get that. And sometimes some of the things he picks up, I'm like, don't put that down. <laughs> it's part of the, the enjoyment. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a lot of fun. And um, I will say that a lot of those things that Mike picks up on that show, he will put on Game Gavel. And he'll start at a really low opening bid, and it'll just be auction, no reserve. And um, that's gotten me a couple good deals uh, over there. Got me a sealed new copy of Mule for NES that really looks great. I got my copy of uh, New Super Mario Brothers Wii from him off there. I think I actually bought my copy of Solomon's Key off of him too. Well, so you're all over the place too, generation-wise. That's really cool. Yeah, he and that's it. He comes across all sorts of stuff. And he seems, you know, Mike seems to be more in tune of, um, like the Atari stuff is kind of his thing he's into. And he also likes some of the old, like, Apple computer that's right. Yeah, wasn't the game or the game gavel site? It was originally Chase the Chuck Wagon, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. Yep, that's the original name that he had come up with um, before switching over to Game Gavel um, a few years back, I think. Right. Uh, but he's trying to grow that as kind of like a whole kind of gaming network. Right. Uh, I mean, they just recently launched um, EK Gaming, which is kind of abbreviated EKG, you know, like. 
like the heart test. Yeah. And um, the idea there is to kind of give an alternative to uh, like GameStop. Oh, really? Is, so is he going to have brick and mortar stores or just online? No, on online only. So it'll be like you ship your game in and then you get, you know, your payment. But I haven't done it yet. I've kind of looked just cursory at it. And the the hook there is he's saying that he will offer more than GameStop is going to give you for the game. Right. Um, I do believe, though, that he only takes complete copies of things. Kind of the big thing that he's trying to do is a portion of those sales of the used copies, he gives that money back to the publisher of the game. Right. I remember getting an email about that. Yeah. Yeah. So the idea really is to try to get the publishers involved in that, you know, used gaming sales are not bad. Not everyone is a GameStop. Um, that there's a way that's going to be kind of a win-win. Right. Well, yeah, that sounds awesome. I, mean, I hope I can uh, help him push towards that goal. Yeah, and he also sells new games, and I think he usually does, um, you know, uh, whatever the price, launch price is, and he'll throw free shipping on those. I noticed that. I was, I th was thinking of uh, pre-ordering my copy of The Last Story through him. Yeah, I might have to do that myself. That's a good idea. I'd, I'd like to help him out and hopefully try to grow that if he if he can. Yeah. He's also got a couple other spots that are, I mean, there's a website that he has in the network called Gamerspots.com. The idea of Gamerspots is you can go in and put in the information for, like, local gaming stores and arcades. Okay, and then it kind of maps them out for everyone? Yeah, that's it. You have this giant map that everybody kind of builds. So, you, you know, you can go in and see, oh, what are some other stores or... And you can rate them and kind of put information in. and It's kind of cool. Very neat. And also, they do a podcast over there, Retro Gaming Roundup. And um, that's, a, that's a pretty fun podcast. Really very long monthly podcast. <laughs> Usually like six, seven hours. Oh. Um, yeah, it's pretty mammoth. But it's fun. Right it's on. fun to listen to. So there's only other one other like kind of big auction site that the people use for games. Um, Shop Goodwill. Have you done any sales through there yeah i've bought from shop goodwill um several times not really much lately when i started kind of buying things things usually seem to be reasonably that you could buy them reasonably and it seems like it's kind of gotten that ebay itis where the prices have really gone up kind of too high i think really on on every item or just on like unique items yeah, I would say, uh, yeah, unique items. Yeah, because I've, I've noticed that. I don't go there often, but I'll notice like when like a Flintstones Surprise of Dinosaur Peak pops up, it'll show up on a few forums saying, hey, everyone, go to Shop Goodwill, look at this auction. And then, uh, yeah, then it goes for eBay prices because it's got the same amount of exposure. Yeah, that's it. The price blows up. And then, so, I mean, there's not a deal to be had. But sometimes you got to watch their shipping costs because the shipping costs are not cheap. And a lot of times they have a small fee that they're going to put on there. But, I mean, they disclose all of that. You know it up front. So what if you just want, like, a, a lot of, like, you know, Contra, maybe a Mario Brothers in there and Star Tropics, like a few few good games but not particularly valuable or rare games? What kind of prices are we talking about? I think you're talking about fairly reasonable prices. I don't think you're going to get in there and get some kind of crazy steal or anything. Significantly cheaper than eBay or just just a tiny bit i'd probably say maybe a tiny bit okay um uh, by the time you put your fees and their shipping on top of it yeah i mean you're not going to come out way ahead if you look at non-nintendo you're probably going to do a little better but then again that's always the case right i mean nintendo commands a premium but the i think the draw there at shop goodwill is you know sometimes you get some really wacky stuff that shows up that you're just not going to find anywhere else um so, you know, like uh, Pong consoles or like the original Odyssey all-in-one machines, you know, the Pong machines. So it's lots of older generation stuff, early generations? Yeah, I mean, not lots of it, but it shows up. I mean, you'll see an Astrocade come through there or, you know, um, I see ColecoVisions come through pretty regularly. Lots of Atari lots of like huge lots of Atari carts. Hmm. Um, so, you know, if you're looking for some older stuff and those don't go for crazy prices, I just don't know if the, the demand isn't quite there and 
then again, I don't know things about Atari Rarity. That's not really my expertise, but I'm sure probably if something crazy popped on there, it would have the same syndrome. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I've bought some really oddball stuff from there before. Like, I've got a... My first home computer was a TI-99 4A, old Texas Instruments. Yeah. I've still got it, still works, and I've bought several lots of cartridges for it huh. from there. This, you know, just really not going to find that much anywhere else. So if, you, if you're looking for unique things, sometimes, yeah, you can find them there. And usually that sort of stuff, like, oh, I got that stuff cheap, you know, because obviously not a lot of other people are really looking for that. Right. Yeah. Um, so besides auction sites, um, I've, I know I've bought a few times off of online retailers. Um, have you had any experience um, buying through them? Yeah, um, there's a couple sites um, that I've bought from, and um, one in particular that I frequent pretty often is uh, tradinggames.com. Have you ever been there? I've, yeah, I've looked through there all the time. It looks like a great place to fill in holes in your collection because they sell like, manuals by themselves or just boxes or, or complete box games too. But um, yeah, when like I'm going for the cardboard for N64 and they've got a ton of loose manuals there that I'm hoping to clean up eventually. Yeah, I've bought quite a bit um, from there, and um, I believe the gentleman's name that, that runs it's um, Jason, and, um, you know, really runs a great shop. They have one of the biggest things that I love about that site is the picture that you see for the item is the actual item you're buying. Yeah, that is huge for an on online store. Like, you don't see that often, so it makes a big difference. Most of the time, if I'm buying from an online store, I'm buying blind. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't really give me good feelings because, you know, it's just really potluck with whatever you end up with. And, you know, for some people, they don't care as much. You know, if it plays, that's what they're looking for. And I wouldn't say that I'm, like, a snob, but I don't really want it to come in and look like garbage, you know? I think that kind of goes more with the collector mentality not that a lot of people are looking for like that dead mint copy, but just the quality has to be a certain level. Yeah. And I especially am not happy when I'm paying market prices and it's below market standard. Yeah. I can agree with that. I don't mind if I feel like I'm getting a good deal and I've got something that's a little scuffed up. Ah, I'm all right with that. Yeah. But um, I will say that, yeah, he's really great. I mean, I have to say to top notch in service, I mean, when I go in there and I'll place an order on something, you know, I, uh, I'll get, you know, the standard confirmation of order or whatnot, but usually that next morning, it's shipping out, and I've got my shipment um, info, and it'll show up within a few days. Uh, I mean, just like clockwork. It's every time I order, it's like Johnny on the spot. He's got his stuff, and it's going out, and it's packaged well, and it shows up in, in great shape, just like I see in the picture. Very cool. Yeah, so I would really recommend, you know, and his prices are fair. You know, they're you're not going to get any dirt cheap deals, but you're also not going to get gouged like some of these other stores. Right. Speaking of which, I just um, a couple of those games that I I bought this month I got from him. So a couple of the unlicensed carts um, came from his store, and um, a good deal. I will. Um, I just missed out on though he had an Operation Secret Storm that kind of came at that same night and somebody swooped in and got it before I got it. So <laughs> <laughs> that's okay though. I'll, I'll find a copy at some point in time. And uh, you'll, uh, he also has, um, you know, a Facebook page, and he will put posts up on there pretty regularly. Like, hey, I got this new stuff in. I'm gonna be putting it up on the site tonight. So if you're looking for, you know, whatever it is. So, you know, like when I bought those unlicensed games, he had uh, put in there. A bunch of NES stuff came in, some harder-to-find titles. I'm going to be putting them up on the site tonight. So it was just easy. I just know, bam, okay, I'm going to hop on there right away and take a look. Right on. So a yeah, lot of good communication really does build uh, some good feelings there. Um, I'm always usually really happy uh, when I buy from, from him. So, And he also has a brick-and-mortar. So I think it's in Missouri. So if you're out that way, give it a shot. I don't know where Fenton, Missouri is, but I believe that's where he's at. What about other sites? Do you have any other ones that you look at? Um, one that I've bought from in the last year was um, JJ Games. 
No, I've seen JJ Games, but um, I've never bought from there. What did you think? Um, like you said, um, you kind of go in blind. Um, a lot of stock photos. But um, I was just looking to fill in a whole bunch of common holes all at once to a big bulk lot. And his common games, um, they're, they're hard to move, so they're very cheap. Um, so I felt like I got a good good price on them. Um, and since they were common, I wasn't too worried about the condition. But when they showed up, the condition was actually fantastic on everything. And I got like 45 games from him, and I, I don't think I had one complaint about the condition. Wow. Um, yeah, he, he's got some, some harder-to-find titles, but you'll you'll pay good for them. You, you won't, um, they won't be cheap. But um, yeah, I had a good experience for what I what I needed. I got, and I felt like it was a decent price for them. Very good. Um, I've also uh, recently just stumbled across um, a site that I would never have thought to go look for items. That was Atari2600.com. I have a hard time believing that someone got that <laughs> domain name to sell games on. That's just weird. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. Um, I would never have thought, okay, that's a URL from someplace that sells stuff. And obviously, even if it was, I would say, so what do you think they have? Yeah. <laughs> 2,600 games. Uh, and don't get me wrong, they do. Um, I think if you're looking for Atari stuff, they have a ridiculous selection of and some really hard-to-find stuff. But I was surprised to find they also have a lot of other things they carry. That's where I found that copy of um, Racer Mate Challenge 2 that I bought. Yeah, I'm looking right now. They got uh, some Vectrix stuff and NES and uh, Studio 2. Like they're, they have a pretty decent uh, selection. Mostly the older stuff like uh, late, late 80s and before, but um, very interesting. The prices seemed very reasonable. When I bought from there, that next morning, I had my ship notice, Johnny on the spot. It was out the door, and it showed up very quickly, packaged very well. Um, and they even have, like, some memorabilia kind of stuff that's in there. Like, um, I bought, at the same time I got that, I got, like, a little, one of those Nintendo Power pullouts. It was uh, one of those game pack ones. Right. Kind of give you the mini reviews of a bunch of the original NES games. So I picked one of those up. It was it was a four bucks. You know, it wasn't the cheapest thing in the world, but it was pretty cool. I liked it. So I would definitely, you know, if you've not checked that site out, I had never even heard to check it, but um, I actually uh, caught wind of it from, um, I don't know if anybody watches Gamester81's channel on YouTube, um, but he does a lot of good videos and interviews, like different shops and, and all sorts of stuff related to game collecting, and he interviewed the guy that ran that, and it was that's what got me to go over and take a look. Um, I've looked at a few other stores, like... Um... Lukey Games. Um, I can't even think of any others at the moment. How about D DK Oldies? DK Oldies, yeah, that's another one. Um, I just never pulled the trigger. Um, when I was looking for that bulk lot of cheap games, um, JJ Games seemed like the best deal at the time, so I went with them as opposed to the other two, but I was kind of looking for the same thing through all of them. I've heard people mention E-Star Land before. I've never bought through them. I don't know if you've heard of that place. Yeah, I've been there too. They're in uh, Play Asia. Yeah, Play Asia. I will say that um, it's to me, and I, I'm not really trying to pick on anybody, but it seems like DK Oldies specifically when I was looking there, their prices seemed a little high to me. Yeah, I actually learned about that one through uh, Craigslist deal I did in town. Someone mentioned that they've been buying stuff from them, and I went and checked them out, and honestly, I don't know why they were buying stuff from them. <laughs> Yeah, maybe they just didn't know any better. That, I was thinking that. <laughs> Sorry, I just found this uh, really cool item on that Atari 2600 site you were telling me about. What is this dealer kiosk? Is it for a 2600? Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? Whoa, 975 bucks. Ouch. But you can, like, you load 25 games into it, and then they punch a code in. It's like a jukebox. <laughs> you get to trial the game that you punch in the code. That's kind of cool, huh? That's very neat. Yeah, it kind of reminds me. I mean, you know, obviously, like, there's the Nintendo M8 or whatever it is. Yeah, and, yeah. But, yeah, that one's, like, super duper. I mean, how many games does that thing hold? 25. 24? 24, yeah. Sorry. Wow. Yeesh. 
but yeah, I mean, you'd have to take take a look through this place, Manita Saint, because they've got like a lot of really cool stuff that I hadn't seen. This is where I, I found the U Force. Okay. Yeah, um, I eventually want to get a Vectrix, so I think it's really cool that they sell Vectrix stuff here. All right, another place. Um, uh, again, I'm I'm kind of into uh, Famicom collecting, and um, there's a site tototech.com, and um, you know, not a lot of game stuff, but you might want to go out and check it out if that's your thing. They sell um, um, the disc system units uh, at a pretty reasonable price. Uh, they also sell all the accessories that you need for that. So if you need like a replacement belt or whatnot, they're pretty affordable. And um, he's out of Hong Kong, and he kind of refurbishes a lot of those before he sends them out. Uh, so if you're looking for that kind of stuff, it, it's a good site to go to. Um, I've, I've bought from there, and uh, I'd recommend it. Okay, so I know um, a lot of my deals online um, are international, mostly from the States. Um, there just doesn't seem to be a lot of stores that are based in Canada. Um, have you had any troubles with your um, your shipping? Now, I will say that I also get a lot of international packages in, uh, mostly from Japan. But you know, I've gotten things from the Netherlands, from Germany, um, from the UK, and um, from Hong Kong. Surprisingly, I have. I don't know if I'm really very fortunate or whatnot, but I've really never had any issues um, with the stuff that I've received. It's always come in in great shape. Um, even sometimes when I think the packaging has been maybe what I would even consider subpar, um, but it always seems to show up really well for me. Yeah, I, I've i had the, the same experience um, shipping-wise. Like I hear horse stories on forums quite often, but I've I've had things packed, yeah, like I'd say subpar, and... They get here fine. No issues. And I even um, I bought some Famicom pirate carts from Hong Kong through a website. And um, these things are really flimsy to start with. I mean, you're not talking about high-quality products. <laughs> and uh, don't cost much either. They're, we're just shoved in this little, not even a bubble envelope, just an envelope. <laughs> just like one of those manila envelopes? <laughs> yeah, just basically like that with a you know the address information, uh, customs form stuff slapped on it, and they showed up just fine. <laughs> so uh, I kind of worried me. Um, I yeah, I've had some pretty valuable items show up um, in like same kind of setup or like a bubble mailer, and I've been very worried. Like I'm so worried that I've taken a video of me opening it for the first time just in case I have to do an insurance claim. And they've been. I understand. They've been perfectly fine. I've been very fortunate that way. Yeah, and I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm sure at some point in time, and we, everybody probably will have something that doesn't turn out real well. But yeah, I would probably go with that same recommendation that you got. If you're, if it's a high ticket item, you should most definitely have someone record you going to the door to get it, um, opening it, the whole thing. Yeah. So that way, if there's any issues whatsoever. It's not just your word against theirs, right? And definitely, as collectors, is, you know, sometimes you're picking up some pretty high dollar items. Now that said, I have had some post office problems in the past, um, not with the quality. Um, once in a while, up here, just because of where I live, things take a while. But I I'm so used to that that it's, I wouldn't even call that an issue. But customs fees are killing me up here. Do you? Have you had any experience with those down there? Yeah, no. I, I, I really I don't have anything. I mean, when I pay the shipping cost, uh, that's it. It shows up on my door, and that's all there is. So what do you mean customs fees? Um, so, uh, like, I pay the shipping cost, too. Um, you pay FedEx or UPS or whoever you're shipping from. Then when it hits the Canada Customs, um, it's I, I've, I've talked to a few of the post office workers up here, and they say that it's supposed to be randomly chosen. But I'm fairly confident that they just grab anything over 100 bucks, and that that's where they slap the customs fees on because that's where they're going to make a little bit more money. Um, so then when that shows up to my door, the, the mailman says, you know, here's your thing. You owe me X amount of dollars, which is my province's sale tax is um, added on to whatever the estimated value of the item is. If I don't pay that fee, they will just send the item right back to whoever sent it to me. 
<laughs> do, do what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a guy shows up at your door and expects cash? Yeah. Yeah, the, the mailman's got his, you know, his little card reader if I want to do Visa or debit and uh, you owe me X no amount way. of dollars or this is heading back down south. No way. Yeah. And like I said, anything over $100 that I've gotten in the last two years has got a customs fee. When you're buying things a little more expensive then, do you tell your seller, hey, look, can you mark down that it's only worth like 20 bucks? Occasionally, yeah. Um, I've, I've heard from other people that um, anything under 40 is kind of the safe zone. So, uh -huh. so I've, I've bought things for $60, $70, and I've asked them to declare the value as, as 40 if they're comfortable with that. Obviously, if there's an insurance problem, we won't get the full money back. So not every seller is willing to do that, but some are. And um, it usually works out well. Well, it always works out well. I've never had a problem there. So if in that situation, if you ask them then to declare the value to be lower, are, you are basically then assuming the risk that if something happens, you're going to take the hit for asking them to do that, right? Right. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, that seems very fair. It's fair, but then... Um, and, and people that um, have dealt with me in the past are comfortable doing that, I think. But um, people that we haven't worked together yet, um, sometimes they, they want to just cover their own butt every way they can, and I don't blame them. So they, they mark the, the actual value of the item, whatever that is. Mm, but, and then you get a guy standing at your door wanting money. Yeah. Um, and, and then there's the other side to that. If you're getting you know, a $500 item, both people want it insured fully, so you can't fluff that that amount on there I'm, I'm just kind of expecting the customs fee when it gets here when i'm when paying for something like that oh man uh, maybe you just need to get a good friend in the states and just make a little trip from time to time apparently i need someone who lives in like seattle i think that's probably the closest place in the states to me <laughs> <laughs> if you get so if we have any listeners that uh that would like to help the old crab <laughs> <out>. <laughs> Uh, I can't imagine that would be just no. I don't have any concept of what that is. At one time in particular, I ordered um, like I think it was forty dollars worth of games um, through RF Gen, uh -huh. cheap NES carts. Um, whoever was at customs, um, not only do they they slap the customs fees on the declared value, occasionally they open up items and just check them out. They do random checks, right? I think every customs does that. Right. Right. And. I guess the guy felt they were undervalued, so he reevaluated them, and I have no idea what he used because it was just ridiculous. Like, like I said, I spent forty bucks, and we were both happy, the seller and the buyer. It wasn't a deal; it was just a decent price. Mm -hmm. He reevaluated them for two hundred bucks, and then charged me a customs <laughs> fee on that. Yeah, so it took me like five months to um, to fight with them to to get this refund for you know. I think I got twenty bucks back. But oh, it was, you're kidding uh, me. Yeah, it was a big pain to, to deal with. So whatever random postman can just decide for whatever reason that uh, I just think it's worth this. That's what it seemed like in that case. Yeah, I, I, there's no way he even took like the highest buy it now on eBay for every price <laughs> and got that dollar amount. Like It was just outrageously higher than it should have been. Well, you know Super Mario Brothers is very rare. Uh, and desirable. We do. <laughs> there is a copy in town that's been listed at twenty bucks for quite a while now. <laughs> does it have? Does it include duck? Hunt? It does indeed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got those things coming out of my ears. So somebody please uh, look at my sale thread. Let me sell you a Nintendo, <laughs> please. Speaking of forums, though, you and I both uh, have sale threads on our generation, right? Mine's pretty barren right now. I would call it more of a want list. It's got the stuff I want to buy. Oh, yeah. Well, um, those of you that recognize me from sites, you will know that I regularly keep my for sale trade list uh, updated, so you can always find that. And uh, I keep that thing running on several different sites, so RF Generation, uh, Nintendo Age, Racket Boy, and Digital Press all see me. Um from time to time, and I've all had good dealings with those, and um, I try to be very fair and take care of people. So if you're ever looking for things, folks, and feel free to get a hold of me. Plug, plug. <laughs> <laughs> Help me buy some other games. And that's the good thing I really like about forums is really all that money just 
t generally tends to stay in the community because if people are going to buy some games off me, then I'm just turning around and I'm buying some off somebody else. Uh, I'd rather that money kind of stay in that pool if I can. Yeah, the way I've got my uh, end gaming budget um, done at home here, um, yeah, anything I sell goes right back into gaming because um, I've already got money allotted for you know like clothes and food and <laughs> all that stuff. So yeah, the gaming money is just the gaming money. That's that's where it stays. Yeah, same thing here. Um, you know, if I go out and I buy lots locally that I'm going to then turn around and sell online, first off, of course, whatever I sell to cover my cost of that. And then, yeah, the rest of it just is my fun money. Yeah. And, uh, you know, sometimes I can do pretty well on that. And, you know, I'm kind of one of those people that I think we talked about before. If I can get a good deal on it, I'm going to try to pass that along. And you've done exactly that for me several times now, yeah. Yeah, I'm not out to gouge people. I mean, as long as I can make a little money in the deal and somebody else can get something. And um, I think we probably talked about it before, too. I'm a little weird about cleaning everything <laughs> that I'm going to sell. So if you're buying it from me, you can rest assured it's, it's at least just clean and, and playable. Um, and all my uh, NES units that I sell, I always tear them apart if they're really clean. But I think we talked about that last time, so I'll, I'll move past that. Well, I hope to actually get into that a little more in depth in the future. Wonderful. I love cleaning <laughs> talk. <laughs> uh, that's definitely an affliction that collectors have, I think, for the most part. Absolutely. So, one of those, anything else that you can think of to talk about with uh, searching for games online? Actually, I was going to ask how you um, go about packaging items that you're sending out. Um, oh. Specifically, you know, consoles or jewel cases, things, especially like Saturn cases. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, the tough ones to deal with. Um, you know, I am, um, I guess, I package things the way I would want them to be packaged when I get them. So uh, I, I'll, i you know, if they're loose games, I'm never going to go with anything less than a bubble mailer. And um, in many cases, um, I'll wrap some bubble wrap extra inside when I'm going to be sending out like just a single game or maybe a couple double bubble <laughs> yeah yeah um because that's it I want to make sure now don't get me wrong sometimes if it's just like one loose cart and uh, it's not a big deal but I'll always usually talk to the person about it. hey look you know this price is just I'm just gonna throw it in a bubble mail you are you okay with that yeah that's it um I like to have that communication because I know with um with cartridges here um they'll charge the if they can fit the item through a mail slot, you uh -huh. you get a significantly cheaper price than if it's too thick to fit through the mail slot. So if I double up on the bubble, it won't fit through the mail slot. But a cartridge in a bubble mailer will fit through mail slot. So Interesting. I let the person know that, yeah, like, do you want to save a few bucks and take a little bit more risk? Or do you want me to really package this thing up? Huh. Yeah, I definitely talked to sellers. I mean, there was one item that I sold to someone, and um, it was a pretty high-dollar item. And, um, you know, this this person had some very explicit instructions about how they wanted it packaged, and that was it. I followed all of it to the letter. Now, we're talking about your, your sealed game, right? Yes. How uh, yes. Can I ask what, the, what his specific instructions were? I'm very interested to see how, because I know he's dealt with a lot of big and sealed games. So I want to know how he likes those packaged. Um, the big key was he asked that the game itself be wrapped in toilet paper. I, yay, I've heard that a few times. I was wondering if anyone actually really did that. Interesting. Yeah, he wanted to wrap it pretty well in toilet paper so that the, the, the plastic Didn't scratch seal. it or anything like that? Right, no scratches, no nothing. So I did that. I wrapped it up really well. Um, you know, not tightly, but wrapped it up pretty well in, in that. Uh, I then put that into a smaller box with, um, you know, some bubble wrap and padding around it. That got sealed and then into a larger box with more padding and then sealed. And that's how that one went out. Very interesting. So when you got your sealed mule off of uh, Game Gavel, um, how did that one show up? Um, that one just came in a box. It was just, um, you know shipped out in just a standard mailing box and he had just i think put some peanuts or something right. in there uh, you know nothing crazy and it showed up really well so cool. um I, I know that the level like the price wise those two games aren't aren't even comparable but uh, i was just, just very curious certainly. to to see how people would do that 
Yeah, and I had some other things that were probably worth, you know, I did a trade with somebody, um, uh, Extinct Head, uh, who runs... He's in the, the UK, isn't he? Uh, he's in the Netherlands, Netherlands? actually. Okay. I believe. Um, and I did a trade with him, and it was some higher... I mean, not crazy high-end, but some higher-end um, stuff. And uh, I, I wanted to make sure, so I tried to package that about the best I could, too, um, kind of carefully. But, you know, obviously when you're in international shipping, you can't go too crazy uh, with weight and stuff, or you're really going to kill somebody yeah. in shipping. So um, I, I tend to use a lot of um, either... Um, bubble wrap or like those uh, inf kind of like those little air plastic air pillow yep, packing yeah. uh, I like those a lot I don't I don't do a lot of peanuts I don't do a lot of um, I don't, paper packing. I don't actually like those air pockets um, I find that they don't form to most items so they just make it a pain to try and fit everything into the box hmm. are you talking about like the little the, tear off pillow thing yeah yeah they're just oh. um, awkward sizes a lot of the time I, I like if it was bubble wrap or peanuts or something, I, I could fit in an extra two items that I need to fit in the box comfortably. But with those pillows, they just don't mold around items. So that I have a hard time uh, getting as much into the box as I think I should be able to. Oh, well, I, I mean, I don't use those like exclusively. I'll use them when they make sense. Right. So if I need to pad an area out and they fit well, then that's what I'll use. Um, if I don't, then it's just usually going to be bubble wrap. Um, sometimes I'll use like some... Uh, like paper stuff just as if I've got some empty space in the box and I want things to rattle, rattle around yeah, yeah. but um, I'm not a real big fan of packing peanuts I really I hate them they're the worst I, 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 I don't I don't like them and they're a real they're a mess when you get them when I got that uh, that box of games from JJ games I was talking about like 45 carts yeah. packing peanuts so oh, yeah. well, I've got to take my, my Q-tips and go into 45 carts, digging these little styrofoam chunks out of the... <laughs> the uh -huh. was quite a yep. task. Mm, I know exactly where you're coming from. and um, You know, for some things, it's okay. If it's a sealed game, uh, not a big deal. Um, if it's anything else, though, yeah, I'm not a big fan. Yeah, especially consoles, like it gets in them and... Oh. Uh, yeah, I mean, and really, and, and bubble wrap. I mean, just bubble wrap works. Yeah. Uh, even if they bubble wrapped and close and close the item in bubble wrap, then throw the peanuts in, I'd be fine because then the peanuts can't get into the item. Yeah, I would agree with that too. I mean, whatever you can do, just um, throw a layer of saran wrap over the console and then throw the peanuts in there. <laughs> You're good. Um, I've not bought many consoles online though i think most of the consoles i've come across i've bought locally I've, I've bought a few and um like i've had some uh pretty valuable ones um get to me really safely and i have some less valuable ones get to me very interestingly <laughs> <laughs> um i would probably say you know that's that's probably it i just try to let people know and you know that's it you get some people that are want to play games and they don't care as much about the condition, um, and they just want cheap ship relatively inexpensively. Yep. And then you've got some people that, you know, condition is king. And and they're willing to pay more for that, usually. Yeah, yeah. and I'm willing to discuss that with them and, and make them happy. Um, and definitely, if I'm ever going to send something that's boxed, it's going to be packed in a box. Uh, I can't stand the idea. Sometimes <laughs> I'll hear these horror stories of people that it's a boxed item and they will send it like in a bubble mailer. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. No, I mean you're talking because you're going to get crush damage. Yeah, like the like especially with old NES boxes, Super NES, N64, they're not made to withstand anything stacked on them. Even like other oh, yeah. games, they're really not designed to protect the game they're just there to display it yeah yeah um i would really make me unhappy if i and i'm not a cardboard guy so that's not a big deal i don't usually buy things in that kind of condition but if i were to do that that would really make me unhappy yeah absolutely so how about you any other little packing things that that you use or deal with or see no, I think you hit most of mine. I just like um, I like recycling them. Um, some of the things I've got in have been packed so well that I'm I take I can recycle the same uh, packing material like three or four packages. It's awesome. 
Oh, yeah, I do that uh, myself. I mean, that's I keep all that stuff, and usually it, it gets right back out. I mean, every once in a while you hit a few, and you're like, wow, there's no <laughs> there's no using this one anymore. Yeah, like a couple of years ago, I bought um, a big lot of stuff off Marriott Guy on RF Gen. I got like a, uh, a Neo Geo AES with a few games, a Sega CDX with a with like a dozen games and half of them were Sega CD games. Oh yeah. So with all of those, he packed them really well because obviously they wanted the Neo Geo getting there good and this AX and those CD CD carts or the jewel cases break so easy. Yeah. I think I'm yeah, still recycling the the packing <laughs> material I got from him because it was packed so well. Yeah, especially like when you're talking like Sega CD cases or Saturn cases. Um you got to really bubble wrap those up pretty well, and they've got to go in a box. Oh, definitely in a box, yeah. You, you can bubble all those you want, but if they're not in a box, they'll still get broken. They're so finicky. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And, um, boy, I don't know about you, but I will I will buy dirt cheap Saturn games if they've got a nice case just for the case. I've got three or four empty ones sitting on my shelf just waiting for me to find a new cracked one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'll buy whatever those horrible quarterback club or whatever they yeah, are. Yeah, I went through a few of those. Because <laughs> I've got a shop close to me, and a lot of times they'll have those for like a buck. Yeah. Um, so, I, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll pick those up every time. Yeah, me too. Because, boy, you can replace about anything else, but good luck finding those things. Yeah. All right, well, I think that um, sort of wraps it up here for the second episode of the Collector Cast. Um, first off, I want to thank everybody for taking the time to listen. Um, please take the time to comment. You can find the podcast um, on Podomatic.com. Uh, you can also find us uh, on RFGeneration.com, kind of our home. We'll make sure to post that there, and you can find that information usually on the front page. Uh, you can also find us via YouTube. So if you look for my channel, that is uh, Duke Togo 74 is my username there. You can find us. Um, and you can subscribe through the iTunes Music Store. And uh, we really ask that um, whichever method you choose to listen, please uh, feel free to comment. Let us know. Uh, and um, if you're going to catch us through iTunes, we'd really appreciate it if you would take a moment to um, write a review. Uh, also, uh, if you love the podcast and you would like to uh, donate, you can go to our Podomatic page, and there is a PayPal donate button. Um, all of those donations go straight back into the podcast uh, to help uh, broaden our bandwidth and keep things rolling. We really appreciate those. Absolutely. Like you said, comments, um, since we're still so new at this, they're very important to us right now, so... Any way you can get a comment to us, um, YouTube, Podomatic, RF Gen, forums, private message, whatever, um, please let us know what you thought, how we can improve it, shop, topic ideas, anything. Yeah, we love hearing from you guys. And, uh, you know, obviously that's one of the big reasons we do this is the uh, we both love the community and um, we love, love to hear back from you guys. Okay, well, thanks, everybody, and um, we will see you next time uh, on the RF Generation Collector Cast. See you then.